Good morning class, so today we'll talk about Africa, the African continent and the land of cultural revival. So we'll focus on the story entitled Anticipation by Mabel Dog Dunquart. So before that we'll have a game, it's named Crossword Puzzle. So I know that you already know this game and for your guidelines there are given clues there. So just find it and guess what is the hidden word for the puzzle, for you, for you to be able to answer the puzzle. Before we start, let's have a short description about the author, which is Mabel Dobdenkwa. She was born in the year 1905 at Accra, Ghana, and she was married to Mr. Joseph Bokri Tankwa in the year 1933, whom she later divorced. And she was a Gold Coast-born journalist, a political activist, and a creative writer. She was one of the earliest women in West Africa to work in this field. In the year 1984, she died. She was the first woman elected to the Ghanaian parliament in the year 1954. So she's a great writer. She also wrote a book entitled Selected Writings of Pioneer in West African Feminist. Now, we're going to talk we're going to talk about the story of Mabel Dobton for entitled Anticipation. So I'm going to read the story and you'll read it silently or listen to me silently as I read the story. And you're going to understand it because after this uh, after reading, I have questions for you to answer, so get ready. Anticipation by Mabel Dab Tanqua Nana Adako II was the Amandini of Aquazin. He was celebrating the 20th anniversary of his accession to the stool of Aquazin. Nikwa, with the capital, was strong with people from the outlying towns and villages. It was in the height of the cocoa season. Money was circulating freely and farmers were spending to their heart's content. Friends who had not seen one another for a long time were renewing their friendship. They called with gifts of gin, champagne or whiskey, recalled old days with gusto, and before departing imbibed most of the drinks they wrote as gifts. No one cared, everyone was happy. Few could be seen in European attire. Nearly all were in gold coast costume. The men had tukuta sandals in the teeth, and rich multicolored velvet and gorgeous, had woven candy clothes nicely wrapped around their bodies. The women with golden earrings dangling with golden chains and bracelets looked dignified in their colorful native attire. The state drums were beating paeans of joy. It was 4 o'clock in the afternoon and people were walking to the state park where the Odwira was to the stage. Enclosures of palm leaves decorated the grounds. The Omanhini arrived in a palanquin under a brightly patterned state umbrella. A golden crown in his head, his kinti studded with a tiny golden beast, rows upon rows of golden necklaces piled high on his chest. He wore bracelets of gold from the wrist right up to the elbows. He held his right hand a decorated elephant tail which he waved to his enthusiastic, cheering people. In front of him sat his soul, a young boy of twelve, holding the sword of office. After the Omanhini came, the Adonthini, the next in importance, he was resplendent in rich green and red velvet cloth. His headband was studded with golden bars. Other chiefs came one after the other under their brightly colored state umbrellas. The procession was long, the crowd raised cheers as each palanquin was lowered, and the trumps went on beating resounding joys of jubilation. The Omanhini took his seat on the dais with his elders. The district commissioner, Captain Hobbs, was near him. Sasa the Chester looked ludicrous in his motley pair of trousers and his cap of monkey skin. He made faces at the Omanhini. He leered, did acrobatic stance. The Omanhini could not laugh. It was against custom for a great chief to be moved to laughter in public. The state park presented a scene of barbaric splendor. Chiefs and the retinue sat on native stools under state umbrellas of diverse colors. The golden limbus staves of office gleamed in the sunlight. The women, like tropical butterflies, looked charming in their multicolored brocade of silk, kenti and velvet, and the oduku headdress, black and shiny, studded with long golden pins and slides. Young men paraded the grounds, their flowing clothes trailing behind them, their silken plated headbands glittering in the sun. The drum beats on. The women are going to perform the celebrated Aduwa dance. The decorated calabashes make rhythm. The women ran a few steps, moved slowly sideways, and swayed their shoulders. One dancer looks particularly enchanting in her green, blue, and red square kenti, moving with the simple, charming grace of a wild, woodland creature. The chief is teared and throws a handful of loose cash into the crowd of dancers. She smiles as the coins fall on her and tinkle in the crowd. There is a rush. She makes no sign but keeps on dancing. Domanhini turns to his trusted linguist. Who is that beautiful dancer? I am sorry, I do not know her. I must have her as a wife. Nana Adako II was 55 and he had already 40 wives, but a new beauty gave him the same new thrill as it did the man who is blessed or cursed with only one better half. 
Desire again burned fiercely in his beans. He was bored with his forty wives. He usually gets so mixed up among them that lately he kept calling them by the wrong names. His new wife cried bitterly when he called her Uda, the name of an old ugly wife. This dancer is totally different, thought the chief. She will be a joy to this palace. He turned around to the linguist. I will pay 100 pounds for her. She might already be married, Nana. I shall pay the husband any money he demands. The linguist knows his man he need. When he desired a woman, he usually had his way. Get 50 pounds from the chief treasurer. Find the relatives. Give them the money, and when she is in a place tonight, I shall give her the balance of the 50 pounds. Give the linguist, stop the kuja, and begin your investigations now. Nana Dafu II was a fast worker. He was like men all over the world. When they are steered with feminine charm, a shapely leg, the flesh of a knife, the quaver of a nostril, the timbre of a voice, and the male species come frenzy personified. Many men go through this sort of mania until they reach their dotage. The Sinex among them treat women with a little flattery, blend tolerance, and take fine care not to become seriously entangled for life. Women, on the other hand, use quite a lot of common sense. They are not particularly thrilled by the physical charms of a man. If his packets are heavy and his income short, he is a good matrimonial risk. But there is evolving a new type of hard-headed modern woman who insists on the perfect lover as well as an income and the other necessaries, or stays forever from the endless of marriage. By 6 p.m., Nana Adako II was getting bored with the whole assembly and was very glad to get into his palanquin. The state umbrellas danced. The chiefs sat again in their palanquins. The crowd cheered wildly. The drums beat. Soon, the shadows of evening fell, and enclosures of palm leaves in the state park stood empty and deserted. The Omanhini had taken his bath after dusk and changed into a gold and green brocaded cloth. The male servant stood on either side and fanned him with large ostrich feathers as he reclined on a velvet cushion seat in his private sitting room. An envelope containing 50 gold sovereigns was near him. He knew his linguist as a man of tact and diplomacy, and he was sure that night would bring a wife to help him celebrate the anniversary of his accession to the Aquasian stool. He must have those. When he woke up, the young woman was kneeling by his feet. He raised her into the seat. Were you pleased to come? I was pleased to do Nana's bidding. Good girl, what is your name? Efwa, my lord and master. It is a beautiful name, and you are a beautiful woman too. Here are 50 gold sovereigns, the balance of the marriage dowry. We will marry privately tonight and do the necessary custom afterward. Nana Adolfo II is not the first man to use this technique. Civilized, semi-civilized, and primitive men all over the world have said the very same thing in nearly the same words. I shall give the money to my mother, said the sensible girl. She is in the corridor, me I? The chief nodded assent. Iafuar retired. Nana, my mother and the other relatives want to thank you for the hundred pounds. There is nudity in my beauty, and he played with the ivory beads lying so snugly in her bosom. They think you must have noticed some extraordinary charm in me for you to have spent so much money. She smiled shyly at the Omanhini. But my dear, you are charming, haven't the eyes? But Nana, I cannot understand it myself. You cannot, you modest woman. Look at yourself in that long mirror over there. The girl smiled mischievously, went to the mirror, looked at herself. She came back and sat in the seat and leaned her head in his bosom. You are a lovely girl, Ifwa. He caressed her shiny black hair so artistically plaited. But my master, I have always been like this, haven't I? I suppose so, beautiful, but I only saw you today. You only saw me today? Today. Have you forgotten? Forgotten what, my love? You paid 50 pounds and married me two years ago. So, that's the end of our story. And, here's a go. The love most frequently praised by writers is young love, bold and courageous. So, in the story, we can say that marriage is very important for the African girls. They think marriage is an assurance, an assurance for having a better life. If you, have, if you can marry a rich man, then you can, have, you can surely have a better life. So, if you were to be an African girl, then you should marry. A rich man indeed so in the story we can say that uh, the african tradition has or practice this polygamous way of marriage wherein uh, it means that it's okay to marry a lot of women as long as you can as a, as a man or as a husband you can uh, support the needs of your wives and also the relatives or the the families of your wives so kung dato ka ao mayo kayo okay ka ayo ka mga asawa o daghan pero o pobre maganing ay ayo na lang another unique way of culture in the story presented was the dress code i mean so uh, you can directly say uh, that man is in a noble in a noble uh, position because the, the way they dress the way they're 
the way they uh, present their, them, themselves can no makita you can you can directly identify that that man or that woman belongs to noble class and that man or woman belongs to a lower class so it's not difficult for you to come on to to identify them and another thing you can also observe from the story that it has an unusual flat development this, the ending of the story is really unexpected or it's just an end i mean you can ha you can ask many questions about it and what, what will nana adaku do upon hearing that she already married Fwa twice so kanong makapangatanap ka ba nga kanong what's the reaction what will be his reaction upon hearing uh, asawa naman din nako di ba so maka impo ka nga maka question you ka what's the feeling atong part then another thing is kanong maka question ko kay does he, does anana adaku love Fwa or does does he still love her or unsa ba kay ano kanong daghan ba siya asawa so maka impo ka nga kanong how about the others kanong when you would feel when you uh, how what do you think about marriage so what well i mean what is the value what is the importance of love in their marriage situation from the story i have learned to love more and appreciate the people who loves me and value me so much let's be contented of what we have and not anticipate for things that are unreachable and are not there right so be contented nalaman we must be contented diba and we must show value to those people who are there for us or kanang nasa tong side diba unlike nana dako he has lots of wives but he's he is still not contented with them so kanang kuan mo kayo is is it is it fair or unfair <laughs> right for the side of the girls mong good makain ko unfair po na yun nana diba swerte ka ayo ka kung kanang guapa na lang jud kay kake kanang kapilaan jud pangasawa si mong bana pero bigyan nga na pastilan so that's it if you have any questions regarding to the discussion for today you can message me through messenger or you can pm me to the google classroom so now i have given you an activity so just follow the instructions and then you're going to attach your answers and files or in the folders i've created on the google classroom so remember the deadlines class don't forget to uh, pass your um, activities on time before the deadlines or the DDS deadlines and that's all for today class thank you for listening thank you for spending your time with me and goodbye and get blessed bye bye